Hi to everyone, welcome to this new video about Keyclock. And in this video, I will show you how easy it is to set up Keyclock to use some sort of more advanced authentication option like uh, WebAuthn. So you can use your YubiKey to log in to your um, Keyclock instance and you can use YubiKey to make your account much more secure. And it is very easy and this is because Keyclock is really extremely configurable. So all you need to do is go to your Realm and then you go to the authentication. In the authentication session, you have the various authentication flow you have configured. So let's look at the default. And in the default, you have a flow called browser. In the browser is uh, as a cookie alternative identity provider redirector alternative and forms alternative and Kerberos is disabled. So basically speaking in the first column, you have some sort of flow already configured. So cookie is used to avoid you to reinsert your credential to every request. So key clock will, will make you enter your credential. And then after it verify your credential, it will issue a cookie and all subsequent requests will be authenticated with that cookie. So there is no need to authenticate forever. An identity provider redirector, it, it is used to redirect to other identity provider, but what I'm interested into is the forms and the forms is an alternative. So you can have a cookie. If you have a cookie, it's okay. If you don't have a cookie, you can have an identity provider redirector. If you don't have the identity provider redirector, you will use the forms. And then you see the second column. So this is um, UI you can get used to, it's not so clear, but actually it means that the form flow, it's based by other subflow. So username, password form, it's required. It does means that when you log in with the forms account, you need to use, absolutely you are required to enter username and password. Then when you enter the username and password, you can have a browser conditional OTP as one time password and it's conditional and it's based on a condition. And here you are, the third column, in the third column, you have the configuration for the conditional OTP. So the condition is user configured, is required and the OTP form required. It does means you need to require it, enter username and password form. Then conditional, if you have configured a OTP, so it's one-time password, classic Google Authenticator, and so on. You will present with an OTP form, so you need to enter your one-time password. So this is quite about the standard. User can, you can specify username and password for the account, and it's enough. If they want, they can configure OTP, and if they configure OTP, it will be required during login. The good thing about Keyclock is you don't need to modify the browser. So you leave this as is, you can create a new flow and I've already done and I have created a browser flow called browser without N. And as you can see, it's very, very, very similar to the previous one. Um, I've simply removed the disabled um, Kerberos. I got three alternative login. So if you have a cookie, a uh, cookie is okay. If you have an identity provider redirector, it's okay. If you don't have nor cookie nor identity provider redirect, I will kick in the browser without forms. It is one flow that I have created from scratch. It is required username and password. So you are forced to enter username and password. And then you have a conditional OTP is the very same example as before, but this time I have condition user configure, but not only I've included the OTP form, I've put in an alternative, the web Authen authenticator. So as you can see, it is just a small change in your configuration, in your flow. I've simply added web Authen authenticator, but this will configure the system to allow the user to use not only the one-time password form, the Google authenticator, you can use also the web Authen authenticator, maybe your YubiKey and so on. So. Now you save this uh, new flow and then you go to bindings. And in bindings, you can say that browser flow, so the flow that we'll use when your users will log in with a browser, will use the browser web out and, and not the browser. Everything is configured and user now can register their YubiKey or other Fido true key in their account. 
Now, a useful question is, how can I test this new flow um, with my browser? So how can I test quickly? It turns on that if you go on the client application section, you will have already some client application configured. And one of these, it's called account, and it has a base URL. So you see it, has, it is the basic client application for the account management. So you can navigate to this URL, maybe in another browser or in an incognito. So you can uh, keep the admin user logged in this browser instance, so you can change configuration. And then you can test in another instance of the browser or in incognito, you can test the authentication. Let's see how you can do this. I've navigated to the previous URL, okay, and I'm in private, so I am not logged in, I can sign in. So the authentication flow tells that I have no cookie, I have no other provider. So the only thing I can do is log in with the flow, with the username and password flow. So I have my username and I'm copying the password from my password manager, and then I can sign in. And then since I have already configured in this account, uh, both YubiKey and a one-time password, it present me with the first option, um, security key, or I can try another way and use uh, everything I've configured. So actually, since this account configure both security key and authenticator application, I am presented with both options. So I can use security key. Now I need to press sign in with security key and I need to insert the key in the port. Then my pin. I touch my security key and I'm in. So now I'm signed in as user John Maria Ricci, and you can go to the signing in in account security. So you can update your password and as you can see, you have your two-factor authentication methods. So I have one authenticator application. It's a standard Google authenticator application and so on. I call demo and I can remove, I can set up another authenticator application. And then I have my security key. So every user can um, handle, uh, can manage their security in completely autonomy. So they don't need anything else. You can set up other security key, you can set up uh, other authenticator application. And this is very good because as you know, having to use your one-time password, your Google Authenticator can be sometimes annoying for user. They need to take your phone, unlock their phone and typing the code and so on. And security key are now a much more common way to protect your account because you have usually your security key on your keychain like me. Okay, that's a Yubi key. So I can simply plug my uh, key in my USB port, touch, put a pin and it's very quick to use and it is very secure. And as you can see, it is very simple in Keyclock to just modify the flow login, the flow browser to allow user of more advanced login like WebAuthn. So this also show you how powerful Keyclock is. It's a very, really powerful uh, piece of software and can be really good for the backbone of your authentication procedure and your identity uh, management in your organization. Goodbye and see you at the next video.